Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I want a free to play and I want to show you some RTAC craziness. So, a lot of people would have picked up RTAC in their low level accounts, mid level accounts. You're going to see today some pretty nutty stuff for Spider, which I think is one of the hardest dungeons to progress in. Um, I'm actually going to do them as a two man team, which enables me to put food into the team as well. I've already shown him in Hydra on my free to play helping me get to the maximum chest for the first time ever. Uh, and we're also going to take a look at him in things like Dragon and Ice Golem on the free-to-play account and just kind of see what impact he has. Because honestly, for a free champion, this dude is the nuts. So Artak here, why is he so good? Honestly, why, why isn't he so good? Like everything about his kit makes him really versatile and really um, just really great in most content. So I'd like to thank Bloodline Heroes of Lethas for sponsoring this video. It's a fantasy RPG hero collector with stunning 3D art. It's got this cool system in the game. You can collect legendary champions. You can combine their bloodlines together and create endless new champion builds. So download using my link. There's also a QR code you can click. You'll get yourself a free amazing starter pack worth 20 bucks to get you going. So if you download throughout June, not only do you get the free starter pack with my link, you'll also get some login rewards, which amount to thousands of diamonds, about 3,000 diamonds and 10 summons as well, just by logging in every day. So every two weeks, Bloodline drop new heroes, new champions into the game, which means that the amount of hybrids through their air system just grows and grows. There's literally thousands of potential Bloodlines that you can create right now. And on the 1st of June, they just dropped two new bloodlines. We've got the Titans coming from Olympus, or we've got the Nine-Tailed Vulpins from an Eastern Mysterious Land. Don't miss out on summoning those. There's plenty of content to sink your teeth into, whether it's going through the dungeons and evolving your characters, your heroes into their next state, or whether it's late game PvP, where you can actually get yourself some uh, more unique bloodline characters to join your account. And actually take yourself into the guild seasons battle where your whole guild goes against another guild. It could be a lot of fun. So as I said, new heroes being released all the time. You can go and find out your favorite bloodline. I want to thank again Bloodline Heroes Alethas for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use my link to get yourself a nice little starter pack worth 20 bucks. And the first 30 people with new accounts from my link down below that post their username and player ID under my pinned comment in a reply, you'll get yourself a new Titan legendary female hero. You're welcome. Let's get back to the video. The best thing about his kit is his A3. It's a double hitter that puts out an HP burn. I'm on the free to play. I did put books into him. I don't have him fully booked, but I did manage to get all of the books into the A3, which helps a lot. Seriously though, if you're watching this, you don't have any books. I would still be playing him whether I had books here or not. I would. He's, he's that good. So he does destroy his own max HP when he does this skill. And when he does that, he gains more damage, more speed, more resistance. So that's something to be aware of. And in his A2, basically he's got this instant activation of the burn, which pops tons of damage on Spider in like seconds. It's really, really cool. This is a great ability here. Also puts out decrease attack. Now his default is that this is what he wants to do all the time. So in my duo, I'm going to pair him with someone else that actually does decrease attack for me. And you'll see that even without setting up an AI, once decrease attack is out there, he goes straight into his A3 without any AI, which is quite cool as well. Um, and then his A1 has got a chance to extend the burns that he's putting out there. So I guess let's go into the build that I've done for him right now. I went for regen gear with immortal. So every time he gets a turn, he heals more. The reason why I've done this, I actually, I needed him to be slower than my other champion that I'm putting in the team. You could definitely go without Immortal, just go full regen and speed. You could go, I think you could go lifesteal and be absolutely fine as well if he was quick. So there's definitely options around builds, which is cool. You don't have to like stick to exactly this. All I've tried to push for here is HP with speed. Um, I've got resistance here. This is probably completely pointless because i don't really have enough resistance to be like resisting everything so this is probably at the moment a completely useless piece honestly this is when i was trying to solo dragon and stuff and it didn't quite work out but 
Uh, the two-piece Immortal at least is giving me this 3% heal every turn. But that could easily just be HP percent. In fact, I'm going to see if I've got some more HP percent because that's because I make it even better. Uh, let's go HP high on regen. Do I have any? Not on regen, on immortal. If I do, I don't want him to be any quicker. This is the problem. So I could steal this piece. Could take this piece. Useless, useless. Yeah, probably a bit more accuracy. Either HP or defense, actually. Either way would work fine. You want to get your HP up because that's where he does his damage. But the defense will also help him stay alive. So I think we're actually going to take this piece here. Okay. So yeah, speed on the boots. And then I was basically just looking for defensive substat rolls. So speed, accuracy, HP percent, all that type of stuff. This is just stuff that I farmed from Fire Knight or I picked up from missions or whatever. I don't know exactly where I got it all from, but it's just stuff that I farmed over the time. And then we've got HP, HP, and accuracy. So we're looking for at least a couple of hundred speed, really. A good amount of health, good amount of defense, and then enough accuracy to land his burns. In terms of masteries, I've messed around with masteries a lot. I've gone in the end with Warmaster here, but I've also tried out, and it worked fine, going with things like Oppressor because you're putting out a lot of debuffs. Oppressor might be quicker, honestly, to, to get him back around. In fact, I'm going to change it up. This build here, I think, is the best jack of all trades. If you're throwing him into... If, if you're not just trying to do him for Spider, if you're trying to do him for Dragon, Ice Golem, uh, and Spider, then I would do this. If you're just trying to make him an absolute unit for Spider and particularly want to do solo or duo type comps, then we'll change it up. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my runs for Dragon and Ice Golem first with this build, and then we'll switch it for Spider after. And just so you know, this is the person I'm going to duo in Spider with this die. So I've got him in bolster set just to give us a little bit of extra protection and a bit of healing. Uh, he's actually got 211 speed, so faster than my um, R tac here. Enough accuracy to land his kit. And he actually needs a 100% crit rate. So he's a little bit under. But I don't have good enough bolster to do that. Again, like the build is weak, honestly. The build is not good. But his kit is very good. So he's got this turn me to steel on his A3. And he's got decreased speed on his A1. Albeit, this guy could be replaced with anyone who's doing decent turn me to mechanics. Armaga, um, Coldheart, anyone who's doing like a whole turn me to drop. Lissandra, like there's tons of champions that could do what he's doing, but I just felt like he was a really cool one because he also does this decrease attack, which enables me to not have to set up AIs. So he's the kind of like guy who's coming in on the free to play. But let's show off my my main teams for Dragon and Ice Golem first. And then we'll come back to the spider duo after. So we've got Razelvarg with the burn here. Um crowd control, drop defense. And turn me to control here in Stimphos. So out of these, basically, yeah, I've got Nephril who was a, a pull. And we've got Razelvarg that was a fusion. Those champions are not required. But look how fast we're nuking the waves here. It's actually kind of nuts. So these two front uh, minions are a bit of an issue. Because they start shrieking on us. And that can, can hurt a ton. Like, it, it's really nasty. Here they come. We've got the bolster set on Stimphos, so it does give me enough protection just to enable me to, to withstand the Shriek. Um, if we didn't have that bolster set on, he would be dead right now. On to the boss then. And obviously, the side adds are a problem here. The burn and activation of burn is basically your speed farm kind of mechanic coming from Artac. And poisons from my Nephril in anything on normal Ice Golem is brilliant. Artak really comes into his own when you're going past uh, normal and you're actually fighting hard, but uh, my free-to-play is not at that level yet. But you see here, we've got decreased speed on now. We've got burn on. All we need to do really now is just get poisons on the boss or just kind of like burn and activate burns on these side ads. Ideally, you want the side ads to be dead before he does his retribution hits. And ideally, you want champions with decreased attack 
bringing down this dude. So I've actually got decreased attack from Artak, from Skimfrost, and from uh, Stagnite. So I've got way more than I need. But as long as you've got decreased attack on, you should be able to kind of withstand the damage here. As long as you're not doing the damage too quick. We see here, Artak is just keeping those burns popping. And, you know, consider I'm on the free to play. This is one of the most, I'd say one of the dodgiest dungeons to do because consistency in this dungeon is hard. There we go, activating that burn. And it's going to end up being something like a very consistent two and a half minute roughly um, run. Even at this point, I could literally just say, like, if you wanted to, just home in on the boss. Because these poisons going in on the boss from Nephril here, or whoever you're using, would be pretty valuable. There you go. Two and a half minutes. Bang on. Got a shard as well. Beautiful. And then Dragon. So again, I'm, I'm farming Dragon 20. I could go higher than that. I could do 24. Maybe we'll do 24 for this video. So... Um, similar type of thing here. Speed going on with some survivability. We've got poisons. We've got burns and wave clear. Drop defense and then poisons for the boss if everyone stays alive. Which I hope they would. 24 has got some nasty characters to fight. We've got people that do like the ally attacks. We've got the um, Crimson Helm who basically provokes you and stuff. So you do need to have some decent way of controlling them. Nephril for me is my control, but before Nephril was in the team, I used Cornelia as well. Same sort of idea. Or you could run Artak in a stun set. And then, I mean, you see Nephril's doing a lot of stunnage for me, but Artak could do the same job. Doesn't need to be in regen gear for this particular type of uh, setup. In fact, stun gear would probably be better for this setup. Or toxic gear just to get like through the wave fast. So this is stage 24. I guess onto the boss and you can kind of see, I mean, it's basically just easy clear at this point. Everyone's just doing their kits. Even if they get a go, they might take down like one of my champs, but it's unlikely they take down more than one. But yeah, we've got loads of control going on. So when we're onto the boss, we're on there pretty quick. We've got decreased defense and attack from our stag. We've got poisons and brimstone, which is a lot of damage. And then we're going to have the burn and burn activation as well. There's way too much in this team for this dragon to stand even remotely a chance. And if you've got Brimstone on your Artak, by the way, definitely get it. Get it out there because, you know, he's, he's going to do what... Um, he's just going to give us more damage. Just more damage and at pace. And again, if I'd booked out Artak's A2, we'd get back to that A2 quicker. And that would be kind of nice as well. But for stage 24 here, this is a decent time. And I'd be well comfortable... Kind of doing this as a farm again like you look at this you're probably like oh yeah we've got legendaries in there you don't need the bunny you don't need nephril they're just the units that i've got built out the bunny could be high cartoon nephril could be anyone that's going to give you some control for the waves leading up to the fight stagnite could be any drop defense champion honestly so easy as that two minutes 30 stage 24 it's actually quite quick considering I do not have, like, you know, the, the big wave clearers. So, happy with that. Anyway, let's get on to the main event. So, I'll show you Spider in this build, and then I will change his masteries and see if it improves. As you see here, I'm, I'm not doing a AI setup here. It's just straight up in she goes. Artak is probably better as the lead here, because I actually don't want... Actually, this doesn't do anything anyway. Um, but I don't want extra damage coming from hits. If you looked at the builds... Both of them are quite weak in terms of their hits. No crit rate, really. Um, he does have a lot of HP. That's survivability, but that's also his damage. He does have to be high crit, but he's got low crit damage and low attack. So what we're doing here, and as I say, Skimfoss can be any turn meter manipulator. On auto, he throws out the decrease attack, which means that Artak just does his burn straight away, which we love. And then Skimfoss is my turn meter control. So bam. We whip away all that turn meter. Artak then ignites all of those burns. Look at that. Look at that damage. Skimfoss then takes a beat. What I would love here, if Artak was booked, I think we could get back to that A2 quick enough to just basically ignite again. But basically now we just have to burn again. 
use our time. We're healing up in between having our goes. Every time they move, they burn everybody. And then we come in with the A2 and ignite again. Looks like we're dead. It's just a, a graphical bug. We're totally fine. And down goes the, uh, down goes the spider. So that's with that build. I'm just gonna, um, I'm just interested to see what happens if we change masteries here, waste a few gems, and go with a more regular type of build. So heals when someone dies, I want. Turn me to gain when debuffs wear off, I want. Speed when someone dies, I want, and then oppressor gives me a turn me to feel. When there's debuffs out there, turn me to fill rate goes up when debuffs are out there. And obviously, he puts out a ton of debuffs. I'm also, thinking to just give him extended burn. And then on this side, we just go with a whirlwind of death, more speed when he kills someone, wrath of the slain, more damage. I guess you don't really need these things as much, but uh, a shield when someone dies. What else do we want? more stuff on this side probably maybe healing i don't know if he's i don't know if it actually counts as healing from a set honestly maybe we just go with this get a lucky uh regen and more accuracy when stuff's not down okay let's try this so i don't know if this is going to be better or quicker it might be more optimal if you're just trying to do this type of duo type comp but because you're more likely to get back to your turns this is the thing it's it, it's cycling speed we don't really need war master here because all of the damage is coming from burns so it's just cycling speed cycling turns as quick as you can and you'll see how quickly we're we're filling turn meter here filling it like tons faster skin foster in an ideal world would have a, a much tankier build and would have enough resistance to not die as quick as he's dying. See that? We're actually getting back faster. But we're still killing the spiderlings quite quick. We definitely got like an extra maybe one or two turns in there. Through this change of build. There's the burn out again. And yeah, it feels like this. If you're going for like literally just solo strat. This feels a way safer build. 50 odd seconds. And I don't think that ever fails. And as I say, like Skimfost, if he was someone else that was doing turn meter control, because he's only done it once, it's not like you absolutely need Skimfost here in this team. I think he's a really good champion for it. I think he's, you know, one of the best in slot. You could use somebody like a uh, Achak and just freeze all these spiderlings whilst all of this is going on. So controlling the spiderlings would be good as well. But obviously that turn meter drop definitely gives us plenty of time to get stuff done but this is just uh, a very very sweet little team here and as i say our tact is basically a spider god like anyone who's kind of newer to the game struggling with this fight what you'll find is he gains more and more value to you the further you get in spider the higher the health pool of these spiderlings and the main spider the more value you'll get out of this guy but Either way, even if as you're coming up through the game, because he's got all AoE hits, he's just going to absolutely crucify Spider for you. So there you go, guys. I've been Hell Hades. That's Artak menacing against Spider. I'll see you later.